Today I want to talk about the Council's budget, the unprecedented challenges that we face both in terms of our communities and the impact on our staff. We've had an unprecedented decade of austerity which has seen the Council's budget reduce year on year. By 2020 we will have cut some £100 million from our budget over the last decade or so and approximately 25% of our staff will have left the authority. But the demand for vitally important public services is as strong as ever. Three quarters of the Council's budget comes from the Welsh Government directly. The Welsh Government deserves some credit for protecting our local authority spending in Wales, certainly compared to England, where some authorities are on the brink of extinction. But there are no guarantees that that will continue. The key factors we now face going forward, and councillors have taken no decisions as yet, include the following. Half the total Welsh budget is now accounted for by the National Health Service, a vitally important service in its own right, but nonetheless what this means is less money for others, including local government, in real terms. And of course, health budgets do get regularly topped up during the financial year by the Welsh Government, and this is not the case and councils. Financial pressures continue to increase. We have uh, some to find an extra three or four million pounds during the course of next year to fund the pay awards. Nobody is disputing the right of public sector workers to decent paying conditions but there is undoubtedly an impact on our budget and we have to find a lot of extra money to fund it and ultimately that is a challenge in terms of the council's stated policy of avoiding compulsory redundancies. Despite the protection that the Welsh Government have offered in recent years, there is a, also a problem with what we regard as unfunded or partly funded initiatives coming from Cardiff Bay. Uh, sometimes they are translated into legislative and statutory requirements and sometimes the scrutiny of these uh, new initiatives and the cost of them is quite poor. That's something that needs to change. We also have on the horizon Brexit. Uh, speaking today in September 2018, I simply don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but the, the impact could be a very major one, a very significant one for the Council's budget and our communities. So it's something that we're going to have to bear in mind uh, going forward for the next few months. This is why uh, all of these issues and more have been set out in a report which the Council's Cabinet will take during September. Closer to home, there are a number of pressures on our own services. In social services, in recent years, we've changed the way we deliver those services and we've posted, through tight budgetary control, a number of underspends. But that is not the case for this current year where we are projected to overspend. The unknown factor that we face is what the Welsh Government are going to do with some £370 million worth of army consequential funding uh, during the coming year. We are arguing very strongly in the Welsh Local Government Association are lobbying hard on this for a significant proportion of this funding to go into social care. Social care and uh, our health service are obviously inextricably linked and we need to, to look in terms of the integration of those two agendas uh, as, as one funding solution going forward. On education, uh, during the current year the Council uh, has set inflation-proof budget for our uh, schools in Neath Talbot. As things stand today, it's very uncertain that, uh, that this will be able to be repeated in the next financial year, 2019-20. It does look unaffordable given where we are today. On the environment uh, and economic development, these services have taken the brunt of the cuts in recent years. They are the visible services that members of the public value. Uh, they uh, present the image, if you like, of the county borough, but undoubtedly the scope for making further cuts in these areas is now fairly limited. And the same applies for uh, corporate services at the centre of the council. What we're trying to do, however, is work through these issues and you will wish to know what we're doing about it. We need to redouble our efforts going forward to generate more income, cut costs, change the way we deliver services with a particular emphasis of moving as many services as we can online to make them more accessible to our communities. Uh, and together with other initiatives such as better commissioning and procurement, 
uh, we aim to use all these tools in the box to close the budget gap. Council tax increases are potentially part of that equation but they're not the sole answer. So it, all of this is not going to be enough on its own and as we stand today it looks inevitable that there will have to be some major and difficult decisions around cuts to frontline services. We also as a council need to promote more self-help in our communities to engender less dependency on council services but to make sure that we get the resources to the people who need them most. As I said at the beginning no services or no decisions have, have yet been taken by elected members uh, we are at the start of the process, we are in discussions with uh, councillors, with trade unions, with the third sector and other partners, but the voice of local government certainly needs to be heard in Whitehall and in Cardiff Bay in the coming months. I therefore urge you all to participate in the meetings that are uh, coming up. We have one on the 21st of September with elected representatives and that is why the council members and officers are supporting the trade union fair funding campaign and I urge you to sign the online petitions to give effect to what are very serious issues uh, facing the council. Uh, we can't, simply can't afford to sit around doing nothing. These are our services and our jobs. Thank you very much.